Hello, Internet. Welcome to the very first full cast of a root game, top to bottom. This is going to be awesome, Waterman. Yeah, I'm stoked. I'm glad to have you with me, too, to kind of get kind of the most juice out of all the moments in this game and to help to kind of disentangle all the threads, because the thing about Root is it's complicated and there's four players and there's like a lot of things to weigh. So it's just nice to have someone who's a seasoned Root veteran with me to kind of help make sense of it all. Oh, that's very complimentary. Yes, entanglement. <laughs> <laughs> it's the name of the day. All right. So uh, just a little background on this game in particular. Uh, this is taking place in the mountain map. Uh, this is a hype game from October 2020, leading up to the Space Cats Peace Turtles test tournament of 2020, in which both you and I participated, Sam. And you ultimately won, Mr. Root Champion. That is correct. That is correct. Clearly, that means I'm the best root player to ever play. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. All right. So uh, I want to start by saying I'm not the uh, best photo editor of all time because I made a huge mistake from the very get go and it lasts the entire time. All 192 slides. <laughs> and that's this clearing here is actually a mouse clearing. It's not a fox clearing. It doesn't end up mattering too much. I'll point it out when it does, but just just know that that's, that's what's up if you're ever confused. All right. So here we are. Let's get into it. Welcome to the hype game from October 8th, 2020. Using get hype. Draft pool. Get hype. Let's meet our players today. We've got four. We have Marcus the Cat, who drafts the Marquis de Cat. We've got Fuglas who decides to draft the Underground Duchy. We've got Nebuchadnezzar, who chooses the Woodland Alliance. And then lastly, we have Bot Bot, who goes with the Eerie Dynasties. That means the last faction left on the cutting room floor is the Lizards, a trend which will not continue into the tournament. Yeah, pronounced Nebuchadnezzar, right? Oh, thank God. Thank God. I, I struggled with it earlier. Um, <laughs> I had to practice a little bit. All right. With that in mind, uh, I just want to introduce you to some of the features on this board to kind of keep track of. Uh, notably down here, we have our scorecard. This will be kind of updating throughout the game. Uh, and over to the right here in a second, you'll see I've made little sidebars for each faction during their turn. So let's start with our setup. Uh, the cats set up first, obviously. And right away, we have a giant strategic consideration <laughs> before anything has happened. It's where to put the key. Uh, so, Sam, you've played a couple of games in the mountain map before. What's your favorite clearing for the keep on this map? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like what stands out the most about this map is obviously the bunched clearing corners, you know, the fox corner and the mouse corner. Um, and as the cats, I feel like you're always kind of looking out for a possible dominance play. And so for me, I would be more thinking about one of those corners based off the suit rather than um, necessarily you know how many clearings that's connected to or building slots or whatever because i on the mountain map there's kind of plenty of building slots it's actually weirdly kind of a symmetrical map in some ways um but i totally agree with you yeah nesting into one of those corners would make a lot of sense uh one thing to note about the mountain map is we do have these kind of paths that are covered that you can open by discarding a card and it gets you a point to do so uh and because they all happen to be on this like east west axis that means that at the start of the game the board is kind of divided in half into like an, a left half and a right half um sort of like this and so the placement of the keep in either one half or the other you're going to try and dominate your side i think from the get-go is sort of the imperative of the cats try and get a grip on your half of the board as much as possible so let's see where Marcus the cat decides to put that key. All right, chooses the bottom left in this kind of like fox area. Very nice. All right, we got our building placement. I like seeing a sawmill at home. Um, one thing that did kind of spark my attention is we have this inclusion of the workshop in a fox clearing kind of in the middle here. And as we all know, this is a mouse clearing. <laughs> um, 
I kind of had initially thought from the get-go, like, why not put this workshop in a mouse clearing just because of the crafting potential? Um, but it turns out there's a very concrete idea behind this placement that we'll see. All right. Let's see the yeah, warriors. I agree. That that arises some suspicion in me if I'm not uh, the Cats player. I think, like, oh, you must have a card you want to craft specifically. It does seem very pointed. You're right. right. All right. Moving on to the birds. Uh, hello. Welcome. Meet our Eerie Dynasties little card here. This is our decree area. And as you see, we're starting with the Despot Leader. That means we've got a Vizier in Move and a, a Vizier in Build. The Eerie obviously sets up directly across from the cats, so let's go ahead and see that Roost and Warriors. And the thing about the Eerie is I feel like there's a bit of an incentive right away to pressure the center. Right, the Eerie wants to grab the pass if they can. But the fact that they're starting with the Despot, a little bit of a slower start, maybe makes me kind of think that their goal might be to sort of establish this this mesh of roosts in uh, in the, the kind of like left side of the board, if they can. It, it, it's reminiscent of like on the autumn map, that like lower left corner, um, that kind of like spokes on a wheel situation, where if you can get this whole mesh together as the area, that's going to be hard to break. Alrighty. But we'll see, we'll see what develops with them. All right, we have the duchy. And here's another strategic choice. The duchy can choose between the bottom left clearing and the top right clearing for their tunnel. And Sam, if you're the duchy, what would you pick? I mean, I always kind of like to be out of the way. So for me, I'm going to take that lower left fox clearing um, because yeah, if if you put a if you put your starting pieces in the top right uh, rabbit clearing there, then you got two pieces where that cat has the buildings in that fox clearing there. Yeah, and to me, that's just asking for like a turn one war that I didn't uh, as a player I wouldn't want to be involved in. Totally. Yeah. So you'd want to kind of turtle up in the bottom left. I think so. Yeah. So pick and choose your moments. You know. I would say as a counterpoint though. Starting in the upper right, you do end up with rule of these two pretty key clearings for the Marquis, and you're contesting this very critical clearing directly in front of the key. Um, it, I think it kind of depends on what your starting cards are and what type of mole strategy you want to go with. If you want to go like really martial with the moles, then uh, putting some pressure on early under the cats might be a good idea and kind of interfering with their ability to build. But I think their mobility due to dig might justify kind of just staying out of the way. And maybe as the moles, you're sort of sneakily hoping that the Eerie will be forced into some confrontation with the cats over limited building slots as well. Yeah. So I would selfishly be hoping that as well. <laughs> All right. So we see they do set up in the bottom left. Good call, Sam. And let's see those warriors. Very nice. Uh, we actually do know the starting cards for the duchy. I took some notes. Um, they're a bit hard to see, but we've got two rabbits and a mouse because we know that this is still a mouse clearing. Uh, it actually, suit-wise, is identical on both corners, which is kind of a fascinating puzzle. So it's just a positional consideration. Okay. Fuglas chooses the bottom left, and then let's move on to the Woodland Alliance setup. There's no pieces that go on the board, obviously, but... Since I've just made this whole series on Woodland Alliance opening motifs, I, uh, I feel obligated to spend a little time on it. We do know the starting supporters for the Woodland Alliance. It is Rabbit Rabbit Wild. And right away, my eyes light up if I'm the Woodland Alliance player because what's in a rabbit clearing? <laughs> That's the pass, baby. I'm going to spread some sympathy over there if I can. In fact, if uh I had my druthers, I would say... These three clearings, or maybe these three clearings would be my prerogative as the Woodland Alliance. And Waterman, just for clarification, the, the rabbit, rabbit, bird, those are your starting supporters or starting hand? Starting supporters. Okay. But the thing is, is like it's a super idealistic proposition to try and grab the pass right away as the Woodland Alliance. And I think uh, the players 
kind of prevent the first couple best options that the Woodland Alliance has in spreading sympathy right off the get-go. But I do think it's kind of fascinating that we've got such a monochromatic supporter start. Mm -hmm. It kind of lends me to, to believe that we may be looking at a rabbit base pretty soon, but uh, we'll see how that bears out. Okay. That's our setup. It's time to go to turn one. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube in the future, uh, I've got this handy dandy turn tracker in the top left. So you can scrub through the video if you want to just get to the good stuff. Um, and yeah, so the way we're going to do this is basically just go through each faction's turn and then kind of pause at the end of the turn and talk about what happened. It's kind of the format just to keep it quick. So let's do the cats. Uh, cats, we have our wood in birdsong. Top of daylight, we craft a fox partisans. Just like we said, there was a concrete reason behind that fox workshop. All right. Good we'll talk about fox partisans at the end of this, uh, this turn here, because that's a huge deal. Ends up mattering quite a lot. All right. We've got a build of a sawmill in the top right clearing. We've got an overwork of that sawmill using a bake sale. And with that extra wood, we build a recruiter in the pass. Big move. Lastly, we'll spend a bird card for an additional action and take a march to move solo cats from the left side of the board to the pass, leaving the cats with a, a martial law amount of troops in the pass, as well as a recruiter. And there we go. That's uh, turn one for the cats. They do get the extra point from the pass as well as two points from building. So that's a three-point opening turn right there for Senior Kitty. Sam, what do you think about this turn? It's a great first turn. Um, yeah, it's really aggressive. I think, like, I'm wondering that march, right? He marched two cats into the, to the pass. Yeah. But... Uh, he could have recruited there, right? And he would have gotten a cat to defend the two buildings, and he'd only have two in the pass. Right. But he'd also have a cat next to more things to clear. I don't know. Uh, so a Marcus continued the cat presence a... in these clearings, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, he's a much better cats player than I am, so I'm sure he knows what he's doing. But I, I find that an interesting move. I do, too. I think the the kind of point behind it is to establish martial law in the pass and kind of make it tough for the with an alliance to get their grubby little fingers on the most yeah. important clearing. That is a great play. Also, this is just such an intimidating number of warriors to start with in the past, and it's just going to grow because of that recruiter we know. Uh, I do like this this play. I do think it's kind of interesting uh, having this sawmill in the top right. It feels a bit exposed to me. Like, there's no real easy way to defend that clearing. It would take two moves to even get, like, a force there, pretty much, until we get some recruiting going here, that is. Um, but this this sawmill, I feel like it's just sort of following the theme of establishing a grip on the right half of the board. All right, we're just sort of trying to control this territory. And I think the... The spine of it is here, but we also have some support coming from this corner, too. I think this is actually like a really good cat's opening on the mountain map, I will say. All right, that's the three-pointer. Let's move on to the duchy. Duchy's first turn. See the cards they have in hand. They're going to build a citadel and take a move to reinforce that citadel. Now they've got martial law in, in their clearing with the building. They're going to sway the marshal with their other two cards. All right. I think that's the end of their turn. Okay, great. So they've built, they built a citadel. It's a whole thing. Uh, citadel obviously helps the, the moles recruit. It's a nice way to kind of get that army started. Um, if they're, I mean, it's not the turtling that I would have expected. I think it's just maybe due to the cards that they drew, but I was kind of expecting them to build in that lower left clearing, honestly. I think that would be maybe a bit safer. It's just like this one's so accessible versus like they could have built up here, maybe. I don't know if that's any safer, though. Yeah. 
Uh, but again, we see this theme of establishing martial law immediately. Um, making it very tough for the Woodland Alliance to get a grip. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll kind of see how this plays out. I'm kind of getting the sense that this is not exactly small mall, but kind of trying to grab a little more military advantage while still remaining compact is sort of the overall thrust of the, the moles in this play. Yeah, um, we got three military factions here. I think I think that's a smart move for the moles to get more more people on the board. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Also, the one one interesting thing is that this clearing is at the base of the 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 pass. If you think of the pass as like a mountain top, and each of these four clearings is sort of the base camps around it, uh, the moles are establishing a pretty strong presence in one of those base camps, like right from the get go. And we'll see these army factions sort of like take up the room that they can in these opening phases of the game. All right, that's turn one for the moles. Let's move on to the Woodland Alliance. Woodland Alliance a bit hampered by the all the martial law that's going on on this board. And because there's no passes, uh, no pathways open yet, it's a little hard to find those adjacent clearings, but let's see where they go. Spreading some sympathy using those supporters. And we've got sympathy in the moles clearing, spending an extra card just to gain some presence there. And into the vacuum, the Woodland Alliance spreads. Very nice. Okay. Going to gain a point for that. They're going to craft a League of Adventurous Mice. It was at this point in the process that I realized that I could just make a transparency out of the artwork and then sort of tuck it onto the player board, like over here. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. So this is our little cute League of Adventurous Mice mouse. Uh, and this is going to be a card that is crafted early on and doesn't pay off for a while, but it does come in handy. It says, once in daylight may exhaust an item in your crafted items box to take a move or initiate a battle. All right, so kind of expanding the possibilities for actions there. Very nice. Thank you, Garrick, for the compliments and the graphics. Took me way too long to get all this stuff going. <laughs> uh, and then... I think that's going to be the end of the Woodland Alliance's turn there. Yeah. So a pretty simple turn. We just kind of are spreading here. I think the object is to try and capture the Eerie's movement towards the center. Makes sense to me. Um, I think the real choice here was picking this clearing over the pass. The idea being, I guess, maybe to tax the moles uh, an additional action before they've swayed any ministers for battle and hope to induce a price of failure. Uh, in this clearing. Um, I also see this this decision also ends up kind of creating a really interesting game state because the pressure is mainly on the birds and moles with this uh, sympathy setup. And the whole right half of the board is just like cat's paradise right now. All right. But we'll see how this plays out in the future. For now, let's move right along to the Eerie's first turn. The ear is going to add a bird card to recruit. All right, looking very stable. They're going to go ahead and recruit at their roost and move down directly south into that edge clearing with a force of three birds, and they're going to build and score their points. So it, it turns out this was effective in pushing the eerie down as opposed to towards the center. Um... I think the Eerie was maybe trying to establish with the Despot their kind of matrix of roosts in this kind of area and take away some uh, building spots for the moles and, and make them a bit uncomfortable, I think. Uh, so right away, we kind of have these three factions all kind of boiling together and the left side of the map. And again, the cats have just like a lot of room to play on the, on the right. And this is the end of our first turn. And that's kind of my like big takeaway from this first turn is we've got um, a lot of conflict and competition going on on the left side. And it's pretty free and open on the right. I don't know. Sam, would you have uh, made the same move as the Eerie? Um, yeah, hard to say. You don't want to have to put a, a card in battle on turn one, I feel like. That's... Yeah, no, that 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 can be tricky. So 
I understand why he goes down. Also, I just think the theme of every of the army factions uh, this time is everyone ma- made a concerted effort to put martial law places. That was the cat's first move. The moles did it and the birds have two. And it just feels like that that is sending a signal. These guys are playing against the Woodland Alliance on their first turns. You know, it, it's really good play. Yeah, there is. It's going to be tough for the Woodland Alliance to break out of this pressure right now. Just being surrounded by so many warriors. Okie dokie. Let's let's hit turn number two. Here we go. Cats are starting out. Let's see that wood in birdsong. They're going to spend a root T in order to open up this path here. Uh, in the bottom, the one that I like to call the back door because it's such a an out of the way path to open up. But it's the first one that they focus on. And I think this is actually one of the more prescient kind of strategic moves in the game. It just kind of connects these clearings all together, which is really nice. Okay, they do get a point for that as well, which, you know... Can't have too many of those as the cats. All right. We're going to build a recruiter in this clearing that was recently opened a uh, pathway to. And we're going to recruit. A build, a recruit, and a battle. Battling in this fox clearing in the bottom left. And they roll a one's ear and they use fox partisans to kill that tunnel. That is an opportunistic battle, if I've ever seen one. That is that is really good. I love when people get extra hits and use one warrior to do two hits. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that I think it's just very efficient that way. And notice that the the order of operations was discard the card to open the pathway before using fox partisans, so that there's no card wasted at all. It's pretty good. All right, and then uh, the cats do control the pass, so they get an extra point at the end of the turn. And look at that. It's turn two, and the cats are already sitting on eight points. And yeah, they've, they've destroyed a tunnel. And positionally, they're so set up. Like you said, like you can draw around their clearings. It's huge. And now they just gained this fox corner one they didn't even need. Yeah, exactly. It feels like that's a little bit of an outpost that's going to be easily crushable. But yeah. in my mind, they've just opened this lifeline that is going to absolutely be strategically invaluable in the turns to come. All right, let's keep rolling. Uh, Melfius, welcome. We're just covering a full root game. This is from October, uh, one of the hype games on the mountain map. We're just kind of going through, reviewing all the turns and seeing what happened. Seeing what we can learn from it. All right. It's... Time for the duchy to take their turn. They're working with the citadel, so they obviously get an extra guy. They're going to take a battle in this uh, this clearing, a battle against that sympathy, obviously to prevent price of failure. Makes sense? Yeah, you got to. All right. Uh, and then they do something. I don't know what they do there. Oh, they sway a squire. May have missed an action there. Hold on. Oh, maybe not. So they sway a squire, uh, the captain for battling, and then craft a charm offensive, which is kind of nice for the moles. Uh, and they use that charm offensive actually <laughs> to give an extra point to the cats. This is like the most reckless charm offensive that I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, I get it. They're the cats, and they their points will level off. But just look at the points right now, and and that is hard to argue why you should give that person the point. You know? I believe from the audio of this game, BotBot Bot had mentioned uh, just painting a target on the back of the cats. Oh, interesting. Which I think is such a fascinating play. It's such a an interesting move. I also think it's a little bit like, I don't understand. Like, the cats just destroyed your tunnel. Like, why are you helping them? But I think maybe to kind of throw everyone else off the scent and say, hey, let's focus on the cats for a while. And the thing is, it totally works. Yeah. This is actually a, a brilliant entanglement play from Bot Bot. I'm sorry, from Fugless saying, uh, hey, everyone, let's focus on the cats for a while and not like uh, get too caught up thinking about the moles anymore. 
So. And I don't even think it's that devious. That is the right move for everybody right now, I think. It makes sense. I think it just sort of cements it. It's an yeah. extra point. Interesting. Every point matters, turns out. Okay. So, uh, onto the Woodland Alliance. I mean, well, let's actually talk about that turn. So we have, uh, a, what is it, a captain and a marshal. So a move into battle suede for the moles. And kind of a limited board presence. I would have hoped for like a dig, maybe. Like they have that extra mole every turn. But crafting's uh, charm offensive is really nice because you get that extra card every turn. So having uh, being the moles and getting an extra card is like kind of amazing. It just opens up more actions, more building, more whatever you need. So I, I think this is kind of looking at this point to be almost like a great game for the moles. You know, if they can bounce back and pop up in like a key clearing. Like I would be thinking about like, where will they come up next? You know, where are they going to pop up with their next dig? And my immediate thoughts were like the pass. Perhaps. I mean, this clearing is seeming pretty tender with only the two warriors guarding those two buildings and this being such a lifeline, if you can like disturb the middle of it, rip the heart out of their structure, that might be kind of nice. I was also thinking about this clearing as well. Like, you know, this is just a nice kind of out of the way attack point as well to like, it's like a freeing move for the moles. Uh, just these are, these are things that are in the air right now. I feel like with this last turn. All right, on to the Woodland Alliance. Woodland Alliance does not revolt, but they will spread sympathy to the pass. There we go, putting some pressure on the cats. Trying to capture any movement towards the pass. Notably, they still hold uh, this kind of base camp clearing here with the sympathy. All right. And that's it. They just get the point for the sympathy. Woodland Alliance, I guess sort of threatening to revolt in the pass. And other than that, just sort of stymieing the March of the Eerie towards the middle. And a little bit the moles as well, I guess, if they wanted to dig or move into the pass. A little difficult. I've got a prediction here with the Eerie's card. Do they put it into battle? Let's find out. The Eerie's going to add... A move and a battle to the decree. You're right, Sam. Look at those bird cards. Yeah, that's great. And you got uh, a move from a, a mouse, which they have a whole mouse corner over there. It's it's an infallible decree at this point. Yeah, it's looking very stable. It's looking very stable. I feel like this is a decree that's in it for the long haul. That's what I'm seeing. <laughs> um. All right. That's the what we've added. I'm going to craft a root tea. Very nice. For one point and a T. And we're going to recruit in the top left. We're going to take two moves. Dead into sympathy and then into another sympathy. That sympathy did not do much to dissuade the birds. They just moved right on in there. The birds are going to attack the cats. And knock out two of their warriors. And then they're going to build... In this uh, this clearing with the sympathy as well. Yes, I would say this decree is looking highly orderly. Uh, and at the end of it all, they do control the pass, so they get that extra point. Very nice. Sam, what do you think about this? You're just sort of barnstorming the pass. Yeah, I, I kind of was thinking we were picking off sympathy to get the despot points. But I think that this is... You know, I, I can't be sure of what's being said at the table, but it definitely seems like we got to check the cats and they're going to throw what they can at it. But I think you're making yourself pretty vulnerable to this Woodland Alliance revolt, especially because you just gave them two cards, probably at random. But um, I don't know. That, that's a little scary for me. To me, this sort of did accomplish both objectives of like approaching the center, taking down the cats a peg, and still being able to build at the end of it all. To me, I'm like, if I'm the birds, I'm like, this roost is not long for this world, and that's kind of fine. Yeah. Like, I can always rebuild somewhere else. Like, this clearing yeah. is now accessible. Like, having this kind of dominant presence in the center 
gives you a lot of freedom is that you're either like pick and choose where you're going to go. I don't know that if, if they revolt there in the, in that mouse clearing, then that, that bird's definitely stranded, you know, in the, in the past. I suppose so. Yeah, I guess you're right. We'll see if uh, it maybe it's kind of a situation if they can battle down the cats enough to free up that building slot. But I think yeah. this is this is a good move to try and like at least get over into this half of the board. Yeah. Right. This is the first real movement that we've had like into cats territory. If this yeah, were a chess game, it's like all of this side is being played on one half of the board. <laughs> it's like three factions. So here at the end of turn two, I think this is this is a good move from the Eerie. I mean, Bot Bot's a great player. I, he definitely knows what he's doing. What do I know? It's a nice orderly decree as well. So I think that even if this roost is busted, there's two building slots in that clearing. So you can easily just kind of like filter back in and build on top of them. Anyway, I think that may have been the idea as well as like, oh, we'll let these upstart Woodland Alliances establish a base, but later on we'll kind of move back in or reinforce from our original keep and just kind of take over and build there again. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, we've got some uh, some hot debate going in the chat. The Eerie are expansionists and they need they needed to expand into cat territory and not mole territory to try and balance the game. I think that's a good read from Garrick. Nebuchadnezzar says didn't they didn't want to use the card to open the tunnel since it worked well for their decree. I think that mouse card. I think that makes a lot of sense too. Yeah, it's like if you're the Eerie, you have to really pick and choose how you spend those cards and you can't be affording to like throw them away for one early point. Because yeah, I guess one of the one of the things to keep in mind too is that the Eerie wasn't able to make use of this pathway it's still closed and i think they would really love to get this roost i think that'd be a really nice one to hold on to all right let's keep rolling turn three back to the cats let's see that wood in birdsong all right the cats are at a pretty commanding lead right now nine points they're they're out ahead of the pack for sure not like untouchable, but they're just far, far ahead. We're going to build another sawmill at home. Very nice. And we're going to spend a mouse card to open up this path here. Yep. Again, just sort of like clearing these paths near the keep to sort of give them some flexibility with their movement and stuff. Very nice. We've got another recruit action. So we've got martial law all over the place in the cat's territory. And then a battle against the sympathy. Four points. All right. And then the cats do get an uh, additional point. Uh, no, they don't get a point for the pass this turn. They just get the point from battling the sympathy. So two points from building, one point from opening a path, and one point from attacking Sympathy. That's a four-point turn for the cats. They are just, like, chugging right along. Chugging right along. Um, Sam, what, what do you think about this turn? Yeah, it's really good. I, I'm now seeing more uh, what BotBot Bot did there, too, which is feed the Woodland Alliance some Sympathy and then don't attack it in the past, make the cats deal with it. Um, Definitely, I, I see the value in that move now a lot more, too. Um, yeah, I think it's a good uh, good turn from the cast. They just have such a good chokehold on the game that the thing is just to fill in all the spots that they've got and, uh, and keep going. They're doing a great job. They've got their third sawmill up and running, which is huge. Um, I think the kind of metric for how well are the cats doing is like, do they have three sawmills running? Then they're doing pretty good. And I think the decision to build a sawmill instead of another recruiter just sort of reinforces this idea that they're like kind of doing OK. Like they built it home uh, in the clearing with the keep. So they're looking to kind of like crouch and then like find some more building slots. And they, they still have pretty decent control of, you know, all these clearings, too. I, I guess they can't reach this one yet, but with a timely opening of this pathway, they can easily build here as well. All right. Let's do the duchy. So duchy's rolling. They're going to dig and move those warriors 
into this clearing. And this is, I think this is a pretty cool move. They decided to not go with the pass. They're not going to fight over that one point this turn. Instead, they're just going to try and rip the heart out of the cat's infrastructure. All right. Now, one thing to note, too, is that this is a fox clearing. So any attacks that they make will be perhaps vulnerable to a fox partisans. We'll see. Uh, but in general, I like that this puts a ton of pressure on the cats who are clearly running away with this game right now. Kyle, uh, does that say four warriors or one warrior? Four warriors. That is, yeah, that is a better move. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. They are not messing around. And they're going to battle in that clearing as well. <laughs> so one -oh battle against the cats. Another battle. Just trying to whittle them down. And then they even move another warrior into that clearing from the burrow. Nice. Another uh, two, actually. So now they're up to five there. That's a lot of presence. The wood of the cats is sort of frozen for the time being. And they're going to sway a brigadier for two points. And they'll charm offensive and go ahead and give that extra point to the Woodland Alliance. And that's the moles. What do you think of that turn, Sam? Or you... Great. That is great entanglement, you know? Uh, I Yeah, the birds did their part, but the moles definitely got... Uh, they don't have the benefit yet, I guess. They don't have the cor cardboard, but they definitely have totally congested the cats. Like, you call that the spine? Well, they're in the cat's spine now. That's yeah. how uncomfortable they've made it. And it's sort of interesting, too. So they've they've decided to do this this turn which is kind of the earliest that they could have probably had a successful raid it didn't fully break the cats but it definitely showed them that someone's in charge of this clearing now and it's not the cats with that said though i do like to notice that the cats have kind of created this little outlet for themselves you know they have this clearing very well under control and they're actually secretly threatening this building which is sort of interesting. It's like two players with daggers to each other's throats is kind of what I see this position turning into. Cats and moles in this kind of lower half are eyeing each other with blood in their eyes. <laughs> um, Marcus the cat, uh, notably playing the cats in this scenario, mentions that uh, one of the issues with attacking this clearing was that it didn't actually take out any buildings and that perhaps digging in this top right clearing would have been maybe a better idea for the moles. What do you think? I don't know. I feel like it would have been uh, with that act of aggression, markets could have then reinforced that clearing. I don't know what happens. Uh, you know, I'm on the edge of my seat here. So, uh, I don't know what ends up happening to that fox clearing, but uh, it might still be salvageable. I don't know. I don't know. I think this is the safer move to attack this top right clearing. It's not, notably, it's not a fox clearing. So there's no partisans kind of available. And notably in these battles, uh, no fox partisans were used, ended up being used. Um, so it's just sort of interesting how it worked out. But I think this is a fairly commanding position. You know, you're trying to just put a bone in the throat of the cats as much as possible. Like they're in such a big lead, like, and this is, this is obviously such an important kind of nexus uh, on the east side of the map. So I, I guess I don't mind it. I wish that the roles would have been a bit better. Maybe that sure. could have been a bit more decisive, but I think they're in a good position to sort of threaten key structures of the cats. Also, this is just a move away. And they have a marshal and stuff like. Yeah, so is the keep with two sawmills, you know. I mean, yeah, that that is the real prize is this keep. But I think it's going to be hard with Fox Partisans crafted immediately to really break yeah. that. I think uh, this this whole game players are staring at the keep and going, there's no way. <laughs> That's a nice place to be as the cats. Even with the one warrior there, I think maybe uh, the cats are thinking that this may need to be reinforced soon <laughs> sooner rather than later <laughs> all right but let's see what the woodland alliance has to say about this the woodland alliance is going to revolt there we go got that base on the map they are taking out a roost and an eerie warrior in doing so but they do revolt with one warrior and one officer 
they're going to open up this pathway here to the top for a point. And they're going to recruit at their base. And that's it for the Woodland Alliance. Holding strong at five points. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty pretty natural follow-up. Yeah, little, I mean, it's a good okay. location. There's lots of, uh, you know, clearings to spread to via organize and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's good. Considering how much pressure they were on early on, it's good to see them online. It's, uh, it, yeah, <laughs> in the comments, we've got that classic suboptimal turn three revolt. <laughs> you know, a turn three, it's not too late. It's not the most ideal, I guess, but turn three is respectable, I feel like. Turn four, you're a little bit like, are you okay? And turn five, it's just like, you, you can just, <laughs> you can sit out the rest of the game, it's fine. <laughs> but no, turn turn three is okay. I think turn three is fine. I wish there was a, a card that matched that suit to be able to train once to kind of get more of a formidable force going. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the Woodland Alliance has a little foothold now. And they're definitely breaking up the Eerie's presence. Um, and yeah, I think it's I think it's all all well and good for the time being. We'll see we'll see what develops in the future. Tough on the mountain map with all this martial law around though too. I guess they yeah. have these clearings at the top to to work with, but yeah, it's it's looking hard to kind of get into the ranks here. All right, the Eerie Dynasties, they are going to throw a bird card in Recruit. That's looking highly orderly. They are going to Recruit twice, uh, notably leaving this top left base undefended. They're going to move their forces fully out of the pass and into this very social clearing here <laughs> where the, in front of the Cat's Keep, and then uh, also kind of take over some territory in the bottom left where the moles originally started. All right, that's the march. The battle. Let's see it. Uh, obviously going to be against the Ascendant Cats here in this clearing. It's a 1-1 one, one result. So leaving those two buildings undefended. But only the one battle, sadly, for this Despot Leader. Man. They've given up the pass point, but they have removed the last defender of the Cats in that pretty important clearing. Everyone's at the table seems to be working really hard to kind of make life hard for the cats it looks like this uh, extra point that the, the moles gave them a few turns ago really really ended up mattering yeah yeah it's it's crazy it's a great great consorted effort from the table but again that fox clearing doesn't have its cardboard cleared you know the despot too could have had an extra point if the battle went the right way yeah, yeah. three it's point clearing right there at this yeah. uh, right now yeah yeah, would you have maybe thrown that, uh, if knowing that this was the strategy to kind of move into this clearing, would you have gone for uh, throwing that bird card in battle instead? No, you really need to make sure you're recruiting, and that bird card is so good for recruit. You can eventually throw a suited card into battle and make it work, you know? Um, I think it's the right move, what he did. Also, I realize now that there were four birds in the pass, and I, again, the four and the one look a little similar to me, I think, they at do, least. For, yeah. So that's my bad. Uh, I criticized Bot Bot's move a couple times. And now that I knew that there was four warriors there, definitely not cr criticizing it at all. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, I feel like it, it makes sense. And again, with better roles, this is a tale of like three roles that have just been high, like very low and have not, uh, you know, busted through the defenses. But yeah. one zero one. One one, right? Yeah, one zero one one and another one one. Yeah, so some some light skirmishing going on in this clearing that just needs to be obliterated. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our turn four. Things are heating up. If I'm the cats, I'm looking at this board and going, everyone's out to get me. So let's see what they do about it. It's bird song, so let's see that wood on the board. They're gonna build a recruiter in the top right. They're going to recruit, uh, finally defending these two uh, undefended buildings here in the middle. And they're going to open up another pathway at the top left for another, uh, top right for another point. Um, I think they've opened four out of 
the five pathways that have been opened so far. That's uh, three out of four. Yeah, three out of four. Because the Woodland Alliance opened the other one. All right, so that's three points from pathways so far. And they're going to take a move. And I just want to take a second to highlight this moment. Uh, the cats, having just reinforced this clearing, immediately abandon it and return to the keep. Right? I, you are looking at eight warriors in the clearing adjacent to the keep, you know? Um, that is scary. Yeah. I'd just, just saying to everyone in that clearing, hey, these buildings are just yours if you want them. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was thinking, like, why not evacuate this guy? But as we'll see, it is kind of fascinating what happens. But yeah, making great use of opening up this pathway just to do a little maneuver to reinforce the keep. This is right. this is some good play and leaving martial law in place like life is good. Life is good for the cats, even if these two buildings are <laughs> not long for this world. <laughs> you already got your Fox partisans out of it and you just built another recruiter. So honestly, in terms of the cat's rhythm, I don't feel like they're going to feel it too much. It's more just the territory they're taking away, I think. Right. If Even if they lose this recruiter, they still get the extra card draw. It's OK. Right. Uh, but once again, they do control the pass. So we're going to get that extra point there. Very nice. And the cats are sitting at 18 points all of a sudden. Yeah. Wow. They're sitting at 18 points all of a sudden. Yeah. Garrick makes a great point that leaving a cat here means that you can actually build there as well. So it makes sense to not abandon this building slot. The buildings that are already built can't give you any more points <laughs> for building. <laughs> Yeah, the cats have just done a nice job of saying, like, fine, you can take my center. I'm just going to find ways around it. I'm going to find ways to, like, keep the circle of production going. Very nice. How'd they get to 18? That's, like, unbelievable. It's a four-point yeah, turn, a five-point turn. That's the hardest 12 points in route to get, the last 12 points for the cats. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if this is enough of a lead to get them across the finish line. Yeah, they can they can just rebuild buildings that are destroyed. Giving up a building that's already built is is not the worst thing in the world for the cats. All right, moving on to the duchy. Let's see how they respond to this uh, provocative movement. Are they going to take the bait? They're going to take these buildings. Let's find. Of out. course. <laughs> uh, they've got. Uh, they're going to do a recruit. Again, I I made these sidebars. I think I should put the burrow as like a motif on the duchy sidebar just like a, with a big number or something and they're gonna dig they're finally gonna dig in this top right hand corner pop out with three moles and uh really really threaten this crucial infrastructure here there's gonna be a battle against these undefended buildings it's a 2-0 destroying both of those buildings and then we're gonna get a big movement just like quickly getting out of this clearing and heading up to where the rest of the production is in the top right. Followed by a battle in the top right, a big 3-0. Oh man, they are it's a barnstorming kind of attack going on here from the duchy. And they take out a recruiter. Now the cats were okay with losing one recruiter, but they've just lost a second, and that means that they are now under their uh card draw uh extension, which is which is definitely a big disruption. All right, the moles are looking fearsome. And they attack again with the uh, Brigadier, because, girl, <laughs> Brigadier is, like, taking everything down, taking out that, that sawmill. There we go. They're going to sway a mayor, which says, take the action of any swayed noble or squire. Hoo-hoo! Man, the moles are looking strong. Very strong. It's going to get them a couple points, and then they're going to Charm Offensive and give the Woodland Alliance a point. Very nice. There we go. And, and the moles are at 11. I mean, that, that's a bunch of points for them, but it doesn't feel like they've quite caught up, you know? Well, they haven't used a lot of their, like, lords or whatever to get points, right? They've done a good job of finding points through the cardboard. I don't think they opened up any passes, because that's kind of costly for the moles. Right. Because cards are actions, but... And um, I think... 
having this pass open would be super helpful for the moles right about now. Yeah. Like just being able to reinforce at will would be super nice. Um, I mean, they're tunnel two. digging. I don't mind at all. It's just targeted the cats and try and kind of knocked them down. And it feels like the cats are knocked down. That is a big check on the cats. I don't think they're out of the game, but they are checked. Yeah. That 18 points doesn't mean as much as it used to. Yeah. They've been bopped hard, but again, it feels like the keep is very safe. It feels like the keep yeah. is extremely safe and there's not right. really a good way to attack it. And so the moles are sort of taking their efforts up here and just playing whack-a-mole with the cats, ironically. All right, sitting on 11 points, very nice. Let's move on to the Woodland Alliance. Spreading sympathy, right? They're using this newly opened path to spread sympathy to the top, and then down into this very busy clearing, <laughs> right in front of the key. All right. Uh, they're gonna train an officer, and then it's evening. They're just going to recruit twice. Call it a day. So with an alliance, um, maybe a turn behind some of the other factions at this point. At least a turn behind the cats because of the point disparity. But with four warriors here, I'm like, this ruse is threatened. They can kind of like march in here, organize and blow it up in two turns. Uh, you know, they can come and defend this guy next turn. And if they can establish a presence here, like, look at all these key clearings that they're threatening. Like, this is great. Hope the Woodland Alliance is just, like, hoping that they can get out of this net of martial law. Which, let's just circle it on the map. Let's see where all the martial law is. Yeah, and the keep's there, too. That doesn't wow. give them a ton of freedom, right? They've just got three, four clearings to work with that don't have martial law, and none of them are connected. Yeah, this is sort of the like critical minimum of martial law to kind of keep the Woodland Alliance at bay. So I, I definitely agree with the idea of just bulking up on warriors and getting ready to enforce the spread of sympathy coming up soon. It's kind of nice, though, that they don't have as much pressure from this roost. Um, that they still have the freedom of movement, at least for this turn. Um, and it seems like that'll persist. Like, I don't foresee the the Eerie having four warriors or five to park on this base. Uh, but we'll see how it plays out. It's kind of a preparatory turn. Oh, okie dokie. Moving on to the birds. Uh, we have a very orderly looking decree. We're going to add a bird to battle. Very nice. Turning up the heat. The birds are going to craft Marine Broker, which says whenever another player crafts an item, draw a card. And they're going to craft an item. They're going to craft a hammer for a point. They are going to recruit in the lower left and take some movement and move a force of birds up into this clearing with the Citadel. No one's put any pressure on the Citadel up to this moment, so the birds are starting to maybe get afraid of the moles, which makes some sense. Yeah, this is good timing. And then they're going to battle some sympathy here. That's what I would do. Knock it out, get those two points. And then they're going to battle the moles with their second battle. Big roll. Big roll. That's a 3-1. Critically, that knocks out all the defenders of that Citadel leaving them just shy of being able to, to get the points for that. That's four points now. Well, I guess that one, they couldn't have rolled better, but, uh, but just shy of card of four points of cardboard for the birds right now. Yep. Uh, they do build a roost there, which is nice. Um, I guess they're just trying to soak up that building slot. And kind of like box out the cats a little bit and just kind of take over the territory. Again, we see the the kind of motif of with this despot leader, the area is trying to establish this mesh of roosts, right? And they've almost done it. They're just missing this clearing. But they've pretty much taken over this whole left side of the board, which is nice. And maintaining martial law, too. Like, that's pretty cool. This is a, this is a very efficient... Um, Eerie play. I just don't know if it's fast enough to stop all the other engines. We'll see. 
It was a big blow, but almost not enough to topple the, the moles. But we'll see how it plays out. So that's the end of turn four, Sam. Who do you think is winning? Oh, I mean, it was the cats before turn four. Then moles looked good, and then birds checked moles. Honestly, I because of the what are you going to do to the birds, right? That decree is looking very hard to turmoil. Um, I, I feel like the birds are in the best position right now going into turn five. Yeah, I think their only weakness for me is like this undefended roost. Um, this is like a little soft. I don't know how, how you would really threaten them. Like taking away a roost, it, yeah, that's not that big of an issue because then that just means that's one more turn I won't turmoil. Now, eventually, Bop Bop might have to turn up the heat and double build for a turn or two, if if that makes sense. Um, or just be it. taking out some more cardboard, I think. Yeah, yeah, he's been close, and there's plenty of cardboard on the table, especially with the uh, Woodland Alliance. So. Yeah, it's been very close. All right, well, let's press ahead. Turn five. Things are hot. Things are boiling. Let's see how the cats can respond to this. Uh, you know, they're, they've are they been bopped really hard. They lost building two buildings in two clearings. So they're down four buildings. Um, I didn't update the sidebar enough, but uh, they've, they've got uh, two recruiters built. And then the rest, obviously, are back on the, on the board. Let's see where they decide to go with all this. It's birdsong. We've got some wood. And we're going to immediately just take a march over to this undefended citadel and then battle that citadel down, causing price of failure. It seems like the tables looked at the moles and were like, no, that's too far. We're going to, like, you know, chop the, the blade of grass here. Also some good point denial. Some good point denial, yep, from, uh, from the birds as well. Uh, or even the Whip and the Lions, you never know. Uh, Price of Failure takes out the mayor. And then the cats are going to build a recruiter in this clearing that they didn't abandon earlier. Which is pretty nice. Uh, and they are going to recruit. And they control the pass. Uh, or they're going to open up a path. Uh, because they have this one lonely little cat down here who's adjacent to this pathway. They're going to use that That's to open up this path. Yeah, rigorous dedication to opening the paths. And they'll get a, a point for the pass. So that's three, four, five because of the recruiter. Another five point turn they put together. Yeah, wow. So that leaves the cats at 23 points. It's almost like their engine wasn't slowed at all. Like they just casually threw up another five point turn. <sighs> Yeah, but going, well, no, I could see how they could keep doing it. Yeah, they're in okay shape. They are. But um, people are going to come for them. Looking at this, what would you say the cat's like weakness is? Uh, that's a good point. I don't know if I could identify a weakness, especially they got, they've had the pass since turn one. I don't think they're going to lose it. Yeah, five um, is a... Pretty big I guess, number to overcome in the past. I guess it's the clearings adjacent to the keep. Yeah. Um, but I don't think the keep is itself in much danger again because of field hospitals and rat, uh, fox partisans. That's going to be impossible to get even through two warriors. I think the thing to think about is not necessarily what territory can you attack for the cats, uh, but how to deny their building abilities. I would say that because the cats don't control this clearing, their life is actually kind of tough. There's six moles up here. There's no way they're going to outpace that and build there, right? So this is a little bit of a nice, like, big wall. I think the cats are, like, maybe thinking, I'll build here one day. And they're also maybe thinking about, like, creating a bridge to be able to build in the top center clearing as well. But they have some options. They have some flexibility. And I think it's mainly to do with this kind of like force in reserve that they can bring about. Cause like if they just march four cats into this clearing, they can build wherever like all over, you know, all right. Attack here and build like, we'll see. 
that they, they have some strategic options going forward, but the rest of the table is doing a good job of trying to put a lid on them. Garrick says it's time to go Fox Dom. I don't hate that idea either. Honestly, you're right. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. Oh, Garrick, you weren't here for the very beginning, but I made a horrible mistake. This is actually a mouse clearing. Oh, that's right. It's that's on right. all 192 slides that I meticulously put together, and I just overlooked it completely. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's the end of the cat's turn. Let's move right along to the duchy. All right, they're going to recruit. They are going to dig again. Look at all these tunnels out. I'm just like waiting for the Duchess of Mud. Yeah, it's a mouse dumb now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're going to dig in the top left. They're heading after that undefended roost. Sam, like you had mentioned earlier, uh, time to bop the birds a little bit, right? Yeah. But at the same time, they're going to take a move down here and sort of threaten this uh, recruiter over here. They're going to battle down that roost for a point. And they're going to battle against the cats in a critical zero zero. Zero zero. That's you just hate to see it. We had one three oh, but I think a lot of the other rolls have been real low. And the thing is, is they they battle again and it's another zero zero. Oh, oh that's heartbreaking. <laughs> that's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. Not doing much to really limit the um, build up of forces, but doing enough to kind of prevent them for the time being from sending wood anywhere. They're going to sway a four mole and they're going to charm offensive, giving the wood little alliance another point. And there we go. That's the turn for the duchy. Yeah. Roots dice are fickle and capricious. Never have we seen that more in display than two zero zeros in a row. <laughs> uh, Sam, how do you, how are you feeling about the duchy right now? It's good. It's just hard to get the points, I think. I mean, I do see some cardboard on the table, and they have a bunch of moles. They're in full display. It's full small mole, right? No buildings on the table, so there's nothing people can do about it. Um, yeah, I guess that's a good spot to be in, but they need to get, get on the go of getting that cardboard and stopping the cats, and those zero zeros don't help. Yeah, that's oh, tough. I, I just saw that comment in the... Uh, on in the chat there that's terrible five zeros in a row against the woodland alliance in one game that is statistically unlikely i think <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible luck yeah and guerrilla war does contribute a bit to that but still zero zero it's like one result out of 16 possible results right if we're gonna math it <laughs> all right moving on to the woodland alliance Recently Ascendant, they've got their base, they've got their warriors, let's see what they do with it. They're going to craft a Woodland Runners, which, as we all know, is going to give the birds a card. And they're going to take a move into the pass. Alright, baby. They're going to organize and recruit at their base and call it a day. So did they get another officer? Uh, nope, still just a two. Oh, so I, I thought it was move, organize, and recruit. Oh, uh, they exhausted their boot using oh, the League of Adventurous Mice in order to take right. that move. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Gotcha. Yep. yep. Clever. That's that's when it comes in handy. They were able to. Yeah, that turn one or turn two craft. So here we, here we see it pay off. Yeah, it's finally paying off. Our little our little dude in the corner here. <laughs> ah! Yeah, I can just imagine like a mob of mice with pitchforks like storming the pass <laughs> and then just organizing. They're just like, we're going to build a, a little sympathy <laughs> post here. Um, all right. With an alliance hanging out at 11 points, it's like their engine got going a little bit slowly, but they're trying to break out. I think I wish they had more officers. I think if they had four officers this turn, there was maybe some ability to maybe like, I don't know, g battle down the the past i don't even know what i would do like try and come up the works for the eerie more yeah i mean just like four officers the idea of being able to move organize move organize is so key to having that big like swing turn yeah, yeah. like if but they could get sympathy like down in this clearing to the left i think that may have helped as well although the thing is the the despots out and there's plenty of battles so like free two points is maybe something to consider 
That's a good point too. But it's it's hard not to just like you got to play your game too. And when when this board is so full of warriors and martial law has been like meticulously planned, it, it you need the officers more than ever. I think. Yep. But that being said, I think the the main headline here is that revolt incoming, right? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah. Revolt incoming. All right, we look forward to that. Eerie Dynasty is taking their turn. Uh, let's see what they add to the decree. It's a bird in recruit and a rabbit in move. Man, I don't think I've ever seen a decree this stable. This is like... Just a lot of luck getting that many bird cards. <laughs> That's so many bird cards. That's just a good draw. Yeah, I've tried, I've tried to go all bird cards before, and you just get those turns where you draw a couple suited cards, but I don't think there's been a single turn where he hasn't added a bird card. This is kind of interesting. So the the area is going to recruit in the bottom left. And it's at this point of the game that I just want to pause and identify this kind of funny thing that's happened where the Eerie's kind of base of operations has fully moved to the bottom left corner. And the yeah. Mole's base of operations has like fully moved to the top left corner. It's like they've switched positions on this map in a funny way. <laughs> I love that. It's a weird game. <laughs> All right, so they are going to recruit. They're going to take some moves now. They've got three moves, so they're going to try and reclaim this top left corner. And they're going to send some warriors into this kind of tender underbelly of the cats in the bottom kind of center right. Sending four big old birds down to bruise up that recruiter. All right, let's see those battles. We've got a battle in that clearing. They do get ambushed by the cats. It's 2-0 with That's an ambush, big. so it's basically a 2-2. Two -two. And they're going to battle again and take out that recruiter for two points, mind you. Yeah. All right, they are then going to plant a big old roost there, again, just tightening their grip on the cat's position, leaving them no way out of this grip. I feel like the table's done a great job of trying to throttle the cats here. Yeah, yeah, it has been good. And and I think this is a really smart play from Bot Bot. He, he, he can build right there, but he's always got this fox clearing, uh, you know, right by the keep in the center as, as just in his pocket. Whenever he needs that extra build, he's got it. And in the top left, too. I would say if you're any time oh. to go double oh. build, it's like either now or next turn. Yeah, I think I think you can still fly under the radar a little bit because again, like, what are you going to do to check him? Both him and the moles right now. I don't know what you could really do. I suppose you could take out a roost, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty, it's looking pretty good for the birds. I would say, like, at least their their decree is looking hard to stop. Uh, they do hit fifteen and points, and what, yeah, what's the cat going to do? Like, how are they going to get out of this this? I would say the one thing that I did notice about this position is it does leave this roost a bit under defended given the cat presence there. I think that's just one of those choices that you have to make there. Like how many do I send? Bot bot sent four turned out to be a good number because of the ambush. And I think he was imagining Fox partisans being used as well. Didn't end up happening this time, but just uh, pre applauding the risk of battling in a Fox clearing against a, a cat with Fox partisans. Okay. So there we I'm go. No End of the turn. Hospitals either. Right, right. Uh, a dearth of field hospitals so far. Um, all right. So the birds are sitting at 18. That's, that's put some five points behind the cats. Maybe they'll catch up. Let's move on to turn six. I want to ask you, top of turn six, Sam, who's winning? Uh, last turn, I said the birds. I didn't anticipate the cats having such a good turn five. And I still think they're in the running. I think the cat's objective right now is to race. They don't need to worry about just get as many points as you can every turn. Um, and for the birds, it's they're looking to try to find their victory, but it's not going to be this next turn. You know, they need to do it in two. And for the moles, I think it's to drag out the game. Mm -hmm. Moles and Woodland Alliance need to go a couple extra turns. Yeah, they want to try and slow the game down a little bit, if possible. Let's see what the cat what the cat's approach is. It's bird song. Let's see that wood. Cats are going to take a march. They're going to abandon that top rabbit clearing, and head over to sort of glare at the moles and their 
tunnel. Uh, and they're going to just fully evacuate the pass and instead move back into this clearing that has three birds and two moles with four cats, which does give them rule over that clearing with two building slots. All right, nice, simple little move there. I feel like they've the cats have done a good job kind of sidestepping all the threats so far. And this is another uh, moment of like nimble cats. Skimble shanks. Uh, they're going to build a here <laughs> in that clearing. And they're going to discard a card to open up another path. So that's, that's five of six. Five of six. Yeah, five point swing. That's good. Imagine without it. opening these pathways, it would be 21 to 18 to 13 to 11. Yeah, that's nothing. And without the pass, it would be like 19 to 18 to 13 to 11. Yeah, right. dang mountain cats. <laughs> They're good. And mountain lions, more like. All right. And then lastly, we're just going to go ahead and do a quick recruit. And this is the real genius of this move. Look what happens after the recruit. I was waiting for this. This is so good. Now the cats control the pass again. This is just like amazing. It's just it, it worked out just so that at the end of their turn, they do jump up and get that extra point. Every point matters. This is a good management of tempo. They had just the right amount of cats to be able to send some forces into this clearing and build. It just like all the objectives of, of the turn were possible with a little clever movement. And again, that's a, I mean, that's a four point turn they're running into. It's been four and five point turns just nonstop. This is a great cats game. All right, moving on to the duchy. Let's see what they're in for. They're going to recruit. Going to take a move up to defend this kind of lightly defended tunnel here. And they're going to actually go ahead and build two markets in that clearing using the formal for the second build. We're going to have a battle in this uh, center right, it's a mouse clearing, not a fox clearing. I messed it up early on, I'm sorry. And that's going to send us down to two moles, one cat, and a recruiter. And then they're just going to go ahead and evacuate that last mole. <laughs> last couple of moles up to the top here. I think the idea being that uh, now that they have two buildings, it's important to sort of defend them uh, against some inevitable bird slash cat pressure. Yeah, also, I think you got two buildings in a rabbit clearing. He's looking to craft the coins, right? I, I can't tell if he's revealed it, if he's got it, but uh, that would be my thinking. I think you're right. That's definitely telegraphed a little bit. And uh, the Dutchie's looking to hang on to this clearing for dear life, it looks like. Um, I, I kind of see this turn as just sort of, you like try and take the, the fangs off of the cat presence before you like, Go and defend your position. You just like punch him and run away. Uh, but it definitely leaves the moles in a very sturdy defensive posture, I would say. But let's just take a second and like look around the map at the moles' presence. I feel like the moles are a bit like scattered right now. Definitely. But they're all they have these like tunnels going on to kind That's of true. keep them all tied together. Like it's possible to reinforce these. My only issue is like these moles haven't done anything all game and they're still just kind of like hanging out there. And maybe something to consider as well is that the most dangerous uh, building slot on this map is this one right here. That's kind of hidden underneath these cats. And I think that maybe instead of committing the troops back to this clearing which is not that accessible uh, maybe sending them in here and battling instead would have been a I don't know just like a, a different way to try and keep the pressure on the cats but I think because the duchy goes right after them it is one of those things too where they're like well I did I attacked them one time and then I got out of there it's up to you table <laughs> so kind of that turn order yeah. kick the can situation I know that move. Yeah, I, I, 
Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, there's some talk in chat here about possibly parking them all on the keep to mm-hmm. prevent build next turn. Honestly, though, it just feels like there's not a lot you can do to prevent the cats from scoring three points on their next turn. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Have- the keep you know and i feel like the moles were in a good position to do that not that it's their job or it would have even worked necessarily but i feel like maybe that's the hail mary you throw instead of trying to leave it up to the table i don't know okay, okay garrick <laughs> you're a chat uh, yeah it always depends on who you're playing with doesn't it all right let's move on to oh we're gonna do some more moles business we're gonna sway a noble swaying a banker there we go. All right. And then we're going to craft the coins. There it is. It happened. Good call, Sam. And that also means that the birds get to draw a card. And then charm offensive at the end, giving the Windland Alliance a point. Just like that, moles and birds are tied at 18, trying to get back into this game. Have the cats run too far ahead? We'll find out. I think so. It's the Windland Alliance's turn. Uh, They're going to start by spreading sympathy into this busiest of all clearings. Uh, They're going to train an officer. They're going to craft Corvid planners. They're going to battle in the pass a big 3-0. They only deal two hits because they have two warriors. So they do leave this uh, recruiter totally undefended. They're going to knock it out. Four of the points. And then they're going to pass it off to the birds. Uh, I feel like this is a good turn for the Woodland Alliance. It almost feels like this is the turn they wanted, like, last turn, though, you know? Uh, you want the revolt, right? You know, like, the extra card draw would have been good. I mean, everything's a little too late, obviously. But, um, but yeah, and it would have been... You, then you wouldn't have to use your evening actions to do the thing. But, obviously, the supporters weren't there. And, you know, this table's been playing against the Woodland Lions very well, so th- they're making this job really hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the supporters that the Woodland Alliance had to spend just to gain access to this clearing, like, there's, like, all kinds of martial law going on there. That, was, that cost three supporters, just that one. So it's uh, it's it's a tough time to be a Woodland Alliance sympathy right now. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're going to move on to the bird's turn here. Birds are going to add two cards to battle. This is a big old battle turn for the birds. And I, I looked back at this turn, I looked at it a couple times, and I was like, did the birds have any other choice here? And I'm like, no, they have to try and play to win this turn. They really do. That's what they have to do. So they throw two cards into battle, which I think is fine. It's just that uh, we're going we're gonna to see where they battle and how that kind of plays out. Okay. So they're going to craft rabbit partisans. Good crap. That maybe they will battle in a rabbit clearing. We'll see. Waterman, what's that other thing they've crafted? The mouse one? Oh, marine brokers. Marine brokers. That's why they get the extra card draw whenever people craft an item. Yeah. Rabbit partisans and marine brokers. Some nice crafted improvements this game. We've got our recruits in the bottom left. And then here's our movements. And they're just like heading straight into sympathy territory. Yeah, all the way. This is the triggering three outrages. Yeah. And as we see, they've left uh, a force that rules the pass. Very nice. Uh, they have a force that rules this clearing with the base. And they're moving into this top clearing with just the sympathy lying around. Um, in doing so, they do kind of leave some undefended roosts here and here. Uh, so that that leads me to believe that the birds are trying to win this turn. And it's definitely possible, right? They've got four battles. If they can use that maximally for eight points, and then they've got four points from Roos, there you go. Um, yeah, I think the only thing is, is that they're, they're going to be battling uphill against the Woodland Alliance. And yeah. my main qualm is with this move right here. Because I'm like, if you're going to move three birds into this clearing like why not move like one or two up here and try and take out this tunnel it's like this it's it's better odds to get that point 
I oh, mean, he would need a, a heroic role in either situation, but yeah, you're, really, you're right. I, I was saying use it maximally and you get there, but that, that you need the roles to go right. Um, the thing that actually I think is a good move here is it is an uphill battle against the Woodland Alliance, which makes your odds of separating those cardboard attacks and getting extra points for them more likely, which I like. Yes. I mean, it's still kind of a crapshoot, but it, I, I understand the logic there. All right, and let's see how those battles play out. Got our first battle against the base. It's a 0-1 in favor of the Woodland Alliance. We've got our second battle here in the pass. It's a 1-1. One, one. All right, a little bit indecisive. Uh, we have a free battle against the Sympathy and another free battle against the Sympathy. That's a four-point swing right there. Pretty nice. And we're going to build... A roost up at the top there and ring that brass uh, hit that brass ring for another four points and that actually puts the eerie pretty far up up at 26 points but then they also uh, control the pass so that's 27 look at oh, that wow. just like that the eerie ties the cats <sighs> yeah. so look at that six turns both the cats and the eerie sitting on 27 points now it comes down to turn order yeah, but it always did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've been talking about the Eerie's luck with the rolls, and I think that's a you know, that's a risky game to play is 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 living or dying by the dice. But you, we we pointed out so many moments where the Eerie could have had an extra point or two on a given turn, and to see them fall just three points shy right before the cats are almost sure to win it. It's heartbreaking. It was a good game of Ruth, though. Good game. Still, what a swing turn, though. That's that's some burst scoring if I've ever seen it. They're like Woodland Alliance scoring right now. <laughs> that's some orderly, amazing play right there. And the nice thing is, too, with all this uh, this battle going on here, I feel like the, if the Eerie were to get another turn, they wouldn't even need to get to the build step. They could win on battling, you know? Pretty nice. All right. Uh, let's move on to our last turn. It's the cats back up turn seven. Yep. And wow, they've taken a beating this game, but they somehow are still clinging to those same, uh, great clearings as they were before. And now it's time to just bring it home. So we're going to start with, uh, some wood in daylight and uh, birdsong, sorry. And we're going to battle this undefended roost for a point. I see a 28, and we're just going to go ahead and build that sawmill for two points. All right, and there you have it. Marcus the Cat wins with the cats. Great job, Marcus the Cat. A, a true clinic of cats on the mountain map. Yeah, unstoppable. It felt pretty unstoppable. There were like three or four special cat turns, you know, and in a game with only seven turns, it was an impressive performance. Yep. Absolutely. I think it's it's fun to kind of like look at this, uh, look at the aftermath of this game and sort of uh, see where all the pieces have fallen. You know, it's three big army factions. But as you look around, there's sort of like these groups of, of big presence, right? Like the moles are like gathered up here. They started all the way down here ages ago, but that's like a different lifetime. <laughs> it's so funny. The moles just can keep like regenerating presence. It's amazing. Um, the cats had lost and then regained this clearing in front of their keep. There's never an attack in the keep. Fox, crafting Fox Partisans turn one prevented anyone from ever attacking. Yeah. Yeah, that is the the craft of the game. Yeah. Waterman, I think that you now have a segment when you do this called Craft of the Game, and this one would be fact, uh, Fox Partisans for sure. Yes, 100%. <laughs> I think Fox Partisans is the craft of the game. Um... Maybe Charm Offensive for the Moles was second place. I saw Garrick talking about how good Marine Broker was for an orderly Eerie. And I thought, I think that's true. How many times did he draw the bird card? We don't know, but it certainly helps his odds. Yeah. Or just get a useful card, you know? And having that extra card each time you start your turn is just like so great. If you've got four cards to pick, pick from, it's like, oh, cool. Maybe I can craft something this turn. <laughs> Um, 
Yeah, I would say at the end of the day, uh, tallying things up, we had five points from clearing paths. We had five points from the pass and 20 points from just doing cats things. Yeah, it's that's pretty, pretty great. That's an impressive extra 10 points to pick up. Yeah, I think if uh, if I were to say anything about this game, it would be that some decisions made during setup ended up having huge ramifications over the course of the game. I'm thinking particularly about the moles choosing to set up in the lower left as opposed to the top right. That ended up being impactful to how the cats got started. And the sort of general uh, kind of like cluster of battling and kind of pressure going on in this left side of the board. And uh, the Woodland Alliance kind of starting off by trying to catch the Eerie's movement as well as threaten the mole's structure, uh, their one building. I think it makes a certain amount of sense to, you know, play sympathy in active clearings. Uh, but I think it just ended up giving the cats too much of a free hand. Like they didn't have to battle sympathy more than like once or twice. Uh, here, here we've got Marcus the Cat, uh, our winner, saying that uh, he told the group that I had an ambush as well, that which may or may not have dissuaded them going for the castle. And interestingly enough, no one is asking if he actually had the ambush. Well, at one point, the cats did play a fox ambush, so I think that was uh, a real uh, thing. Okay, I see, I see. Um, but yeah, with partisans and with uh, the kind of star move of the game for me, which was just reinforcing the keep through the open pathway, simultaneously building and reinforcing, like, I, th that turn blew my mind. I thought it was the best. Uh, with that star move, there was no way anyone was going to get through and break the keep. So it left the cats just in a great position to keep on steamrolling. Yep. Um, I would say, too, that there was a ton of pressure in this clearing from the other factions when they sensed that the cats were getting a, a foothold on the lead. And then it kind of tapered off after those buildings were gone. And the cats were able to sort of easily retake it. And I just wonder, like, you know, Root is a game where you don't have enough time to do everything you want to do. You have to kind of pick and choose and prioritize. And that's what makes it so fun strategically. I think the choice to go after this clearing made a ton of sense at the time. But it actually maybe was more important to take out the pass in the long run. Like, yeah, there was challenge to the pass until obviously the woodland alliance came in there at the end with the big 3-0 like the birds had their presence here but then they ended up having to move down later on um i will say this is a pretty fun game to work on and kind of like think about and analyze and uh we are hitting an hour 30 exactly so i want to say to you sam uh, thank you so much for joining me for this analysis and kind of like breakdown of this game. Um, we are going to keep streaming here for another little bit, but uh, for those of you who are watching this in the future, make sure to leave a comment and tell me what you would have done to prevent the cats from running away with such a, a commanding victory. And uh, also let me know if this is going to influence your play in the mountain map in the future. All right. So, awesome. Sam. Um... Well, hold on, hold on. Kyle, I do want to congratulate you on, you put way too much work into this uh, to, you know, streamline to analyze a game that was played at a very high level. And I, I thank you for having me on to do it. But I think, I think, uh, I thank you personally for making the exact kind of root content I would want to watch, you know? Um, when I'm just like, kind of like having a late night and like, just kind of want to casually get better at root, but can't commit to a TTS game or just kind of want to watch something as I'm going to bed, your dulcet tones and, and analysis are much appreciated. So thank you. Heck yeah. Hopefully more to come, more to come. I hope, yeah. I hope I stay generally unemployed so I can keep spending <laughs> too much time doing this. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much everyone for tuning in. 
and I'll see you on Root Digital in like a little bit. Yeah, come play.